today's day 29 and it was really really cold out last night it was windy in fact right here behind me I heard this one fall just last night when I was trying to sleep I was just over here uh, it's not even dead you know I was talking yesterday about wanting to stay away from deadfall pot you know potentially deadfall trees uh, you know this one's totally alive and it fell down whenever you're out there's always risks and you have to weigh those risks I'm glad I wasn't sleeping right there, though. Uh, yeah, today, shelter day. And uh, and I'm excited about it, because like I said, it was really cold last night, and I do not have a lot of warm clothes. I, you know, I was able to put like this bandana on my head to try to keep warm a little bit, and it does help a lot. Bandanas are a great multi-use prep. It was a hat uh, you know, for washing up, for filtering things. Got lots of uses. I love multi-use preps. But, uh, you know, they're not going to cover me up like a winter jacket, so I need some kind of a... Uh, I need some kind of a uh, shelter, and uh, and that's the plan for today. Now, yesterday I made that little stick model. I have a clear idea of what I want to do today. I feel like I can do it all in one day, but uh, you know, whenever you get out and you actually start doing something, that's when the rubber hits the road, and you really see how long something's actually going to take. And uh, translating translating an idea into reality sometimes can take longer than, than what you think. In fact, the word praxis is Greek for translating or turning ideas, intellectual constructs, into something physical and tangible in the real world. That's praxis. And we'll see how well I hold up and uh, represent that idea today. Oh, it's cold, though. It's very cold. So we'll see. When you're chopping down trees using either a machete or just a regular axe, uh, the easiest way to remove the most wood at a time and to get the thing separated from the ground is to chop in two directions. And I usually start by doing kind of a downward 45 degree angle kind of chop. And then you'll see that kind of feathers out the wood. And then what I do is I do another chop, chop that's sort of like parallel to the ground. And what you're doing is you're, you're first you're going down like this and then you go coming from the side like this, and that's chopping out little triangular wedges. If you just keep coming in from the same direction, those wedges really never get knocked out. But if you come down this way, and then from the sides, and then back, and then from the sides, you're slowly just chop, 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 and throwing all those wedges up and out of your way. It's also easy if you can kind of go around the periphery of the tree. And if it's a large tree, make sure you have some sense of which way it's gonna fall when it does fall. And when they are falling, remember trees can bounce and kick back at you. So as soon as it's going over, make sure you get out of the way. It can be very dangerous. This right here, this is exactly what I was talking about when I said if I just had heavier crutches, I could use those to hold up the, the main pole. What I'll be able to do is just run the main pole right through here. I'm gonna get another one to correspond to kind of stabilize it left to right. And between this and one more, uh, I've got the main poles for my, my lodge already. So this, this forest is really easy to work with and uh, my ankle's still, still feeling all right. Definitely. I should have considered putting on my gloves before I started getting a blister. It's the most effective time to put them on, but at least I got them now. Well, I've got the three major structural elements of this shelter all set. I've got the ridge pole and I have the two supports that go on this end. Uh, and I've been trying to think about how to kind of do these all my, by myself. Usually it's a lot easier to do all this stuff if you have two people, but I, I think I figured out a way of doing this where I just can use myself. So I, I put this one through and I've got my two other structural elements here. And if I can just get one of these up in here, like that, 
All right, and then I can pick up the other one and I think just slip it right in. Really dig these down into the ground so they're not slipping and sliding after the fact. That seems pretty good. Was that a test or an unnecessary risk? It worked though. One thing that I really like about building these sorts of primitive structures is that you're always working with materials that you have right on hand, right in the landscape, and I think it gives it a really nice quality to it. I know what I'm working for now is, you know, purpose and function, not so much the aesthetic of how it looks, but it, as it comes together, it does have a certain beauty to it because it's drawn right up out of the, the local environment. I, I think with a lot of, you know, residential, you know, contemporary residential construction, now, it's, it's something that's really lacking. Uh, you know, things are just done in such a cookie cutter sort of approach. Materials are shipped in from, you know, God knows where, you know, really far away. And it makes everywhere, to some degree, kind of look the same. It's almost like kind of a Walmart effect where, you know, you walk into a Walmart uh, and you pretty, well, today you walk into a Walmart and, <laughs> you know, it's probably a different experience. But, you know, in the past, you know, a month ago, you walk into a Walmart and you really couldn't tell where you were in the country or in the world because everywhere pretty much was built in the same way and it always looked the same. So I think it's great whenever you're, you're doing any kind of a building, if you, you can take some, at least some materials from the local environment, it, it just gives it a real beauty, a real classiness, and uh, again, that's not what I'm working for today. I'm working on not freezing to death today, but, but still, it's, a, it's an aesthetic that you, know, you can appreciate even if uh, you know, there's maybe some other higher priorities. As I'm grabbing all the sticks for the side poles, what I'm doing is I'm going down one side and clearing them off of branches, and that's going to be the side that faces inside the, uh, the structure. But on the outside, I'm leaving the branches on there. Not only are they going to offer uh, some protection from rain, just being there, I mean very minimal, but some. Uh, also, having all these little sticks stick out is going to help me to stack things onto the side, and these things are going to act as little hooks to hold up all the uh, the shingling that I put on the outside to try to shed water away. So only cleaning it on the inside surface. What I'm gonna start doing is taking all these just random sticks and things like that, and I wanna be crisscrossing them over here, making a bunch of X's all up and down this, this side. And once, there we go. Once I, I get a dense enough mesh of these, what I can do is start taking all the leaves from the forest floor and covering it up on there. And that is going to start making a wall that's not only impervious to being seen through, but it also ha has a lot of insulating properties because of all the air that's trapped in all of these leaves. So I've got a ways to go, but uh, it's starting to come together. I decided that before I filled in all the walls here, I'd like to work on the wood stove area, kind of the fireplace, because it's easier to carry the stones in wall there aren't walls, I can just walk right in and place them. And it's coming up reasonably well. I've got this uh, opening here uh, where I'm gonna have my burn area. I don't wanna make it too big. It's just easier to manage a small fire. So I'm, I'm going a little bit on the small side. And if I have large sticks, I can, I can stick them in from this end and they'll kind of burn as they go in. Uh, I'm building it really strong all around with lots of extra reinforcing stone on the side to kind of just hold it all together because as things warm up and heat up they shift, they crack, and I don't want the thing collapsing in on itself in the middle of a, a burn sometime. Uh, I'm working on a chimney area up here where the exhaust gases can come out. I'm just uh, kind of piling the stones up and around it, paying really close attention to getting them nice and stable in there. And once I get this basic structure together, what I'm gonna do is go into the cracks and shove a lot of mud and sand, like that kind of debris, inorganic debris, in there. And by doing that, I'll be able to sort of streamline the airflow so that the, the air and hot, uh, you know, heating gases will start at the bottom and proceed straight up to the top without, uh, you know, swirling around and having exhaust come into the, the living space. So I got a bit of a ways to go on it, but so far I'm pretty pleased with how it seems to be coming out. A good recipe for making the mortar that's gonna go into all the cracks around the fireplace is to take 
some mud, uh, which is primarily clay, and you can tell the clay because when I ball it up into a ball in my hand, it kind of retains that shape, and that lets you know there's an awful lot of clay in there. If you take that clay and then grab some sand from you know the sand bank or wherever you can find it, and work those together, they're going to make a really nice kind of mortar. And you don't want to get big rocks in there. I'm going to take the big rocks out. They're going to make a really nice mortar that I'm going to be able to put into all those cracks, and that should hold together pretty well. Is it going to be like concrete? Absolutely not, but it's better than nothing, and I'm happy to have these resources that I, I have been able to find here. I'm pretty much set with the outside layer of this shelter, and now what I want to do is two things at the same time. One, I want to le level out the inside here, kind of get dug in and get it nice and flat, and the material that I dig out from here is great material. All this you know, fluffy, decomposed dirt and leaves and everything. This is great material for putting on the outside to keep the wind from coming through here. Not only is it going to break the wind, but it's also going to act as kind of a, a flame retardant. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be as careful as I possibly can with the idea of having a fireplace in here and having dirt packed all around this shelter as opposed to just sticks and dried leaves. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of imagination to, to see the problems of just having sticks and dry leaves. So how, having the dirt layered up on top of that, keeping the oxygen from wrapping around all the sticks, that's going to create a safety situation too. So what I need to do right now is just dig all this stuff out and as usual I'm using a digging stick to get in there. I'm just finishing up the fireplace area here right now and I did a quick burn earlier and I found that a lot of smoke was still coming back into the living space. And I, I looked in and I noticed that there were a lot of holes in the back of the fireplace uh, where air was able to get to the fire. And that gave it an awful lot of air. And then the smoke could kind of go up wherever it wanted to. And again, like I said, a lot of it was coming in the front here. I tried to patch up as many holes as I could, but I feel like if I patch up the holes in the back that are feeding air to the fire, and all the air that's going to go to the fire has to go through the front, that's going to create a natural draft that will prevent that smoke from coming out this way. So I'm taking a lot more mud, patching up the back, smoothing the sides up on the inside, and getting it so that there's one entrance and one exit so the air comes in the side and out the top. At this point I feel like I have this shelter about as good as I'm going to get it for the day today. I've got the walls basically covered up with the uh, you know dirt and leaf material. I got the tarp over the top. The wood stove is not perfect, but it is, it's working all right. I'm not getting that much smoke back in here. I think one thing that I could do to improve it that I'll do later is maybe take some of that clay and make a smaller opening here. I, th I think the opening's just still too big. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna improve that uh, along with a lot of other things in here. But at this point, I've got some warmth on me. I don't have wind whipping across me. I am a lot more comfortable than I have been for many days now. So, so I'm appreciating this and being, you know, thankful for what I have at the moment. Uh, but there's a lot to do. Uh, at this point, I, I really got to assess what, I, what I've got, what I need to secure, you know, in terms of food and everything. And uh, this is a starting point. This isn't the finishing point. Uh, but it's, it's going to be a big day tomorrow. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.